Hello everybody from Planter Reviews UK, today is the 14th of March and in this video I want to uh, talk about the beautiful uh, Selogine Cristata Varietas uh, Alba. Uh, the Selogine is a genus of orchids uh, native to uh, Asia and Selogine Cristata in particular comes from uh, the um, Himalayan region and the um, prerogative of this uh, um, beautiful orchid is uh, the incredibly beautiful flower uh, that um, the scientific epithet cristata means uh, combor crest and is due to the uh, this kind of uh, uh, hairy um, hairy structure in the lip. I'm not too sure if you are able to see it, I'll try, because this one uh, is the white variety, the Alba. Uh, in the normal variety uh, the comb is actually yellow. Uh, unfortunately I don't uh, have in bloom the uh, uh, yellow, the, I mean the white uh, and uh, uh, the white variety with the yellow comb. However you can see here, I think quite clearly, the uh, hairy comb uh, that uh, is present uh, on the uh, labellum on the lip. Uh, the genus name Selogine uh, means, uh, uh, comes from the Greek for uh, um, uh, koilos, I think that means hollow, and gynos that means uh, woman, and uh, is probably due to the uh, peculiar shape of uh, the uh, labellum. Uh, the, this orchid is uh, uh, actually one of the uh, easiest to grow uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, quite uh, popular um, both in the normal variety with the yellow uh, with, with the yellow uh, comb and the white variety because uh, it is one of the uh, most uh, cold tolerant uh, orchids in uh, the, um, in the market, uh, it is indeed a typical species that people grow in the uh, cold, in cold greenhouses. Uh, in winter, it can take temperatures about 10 to 12 degrees. Uh, well, in summer, obviously, it can stand temperatures uh, on the 20, 25 degrees. Uh, in nature, usually, uh, it um, gets um, pretty cool, I wouldn't say cold, but yeah, pretty cool uh, temperature, but uh, um, in a dry environment, because in winter the Himalaya, the Himalaya is uh, quite dry, there's not much rainfall, instead the monsoon brings rainfall mostly in summer, and we need to try to imitate this pattern in cultivation, because the um, this orchid um, doesn't really like to dry out, especially in summer. However, from the information I found, it doesn't mind really to be kept uh, quite moist in winter as well. And actually, if you are keeping this uh, orchid like me in uh, at home, uh, as it is not that cold, very rarely in, how, in our home we have temperatures about 10 to 12 degrees in uh, in the winter, uh, it is uh, strongly recommended to keep uh, anyway the soil uh, moist and uh, um, the humidity quite high. Get definitely don't put the this orchid in the proximity of a heater, uh, otherwise it will get really really um, damaged by the uh, dry hair and the warm uh, too warm temperature. Uh, the plant uh, grows uh, from uh, uh, pseudobulbs, and you can, as you can see, I bought this one in January from Burnham Nurseries that uh, actually has a very nice uh, um, range of selogenes. I can definitely recommend the green uh, this uh, nursery in the UK for the uh, quality of the plants, and uh, of course, uh, I am not really. Uh, to, I don't feel uh, to, uh, I've done anything to deserve this blooming because uh, it's, uh, it's March, so the plant has already been preparing for blooming when it was uh, in Bernard Nurseries, uh, uh, the nursery. Uh, however, I'm definitely uh, very much enjoying the beautiful blooms. Uh, this selogine is uh, quite uh, rambling in habits. Uh, usually the intermedia, uh, the typical variety is more... Uh, um, 
the pseudo bulbs are that are this structure here are closer to each other instead this one the white variety is uh, quite rumbling you can see how um, far from each other are the pseudo bulbs uh, on top of that uh, I think that somehow I was not able to keep this uh, uh, plant uh, uh, hydrated enough because to me the pseudo bulbs look quite uh, um, look quite wrinkly usually orchids uh, gets uh, this uh, uh, type of texture if uh, they are not uh, watered properly so uh, it is uh, true that some orchids tend to have pseudobulbs more wrinkly than others but this one in particular uh, i checked uh, online and usually gets uh, pseudobulbs a lot uh, uh, plumper than they actually are uh, i'm not too sure why i tried to water it as regularly as possible however i can see that uh, uh, this plant has been potted part in bark but also part in uh, polystyrene that really doesn't hold any humidity and i'm not too sure really how much uh, is the polystyrene to bark ratio and this might be the reason why uh, the plant didn't uh, i was still able to bloom but to me didn't really uh, do well with this uh, kind of uh, potting at least in my home condition so definitely after blooming i will need to repot it selogine don't really like to be repotted and uh, uh, it's better to do it uh, when the plant in a, is an active growing so in spring after uh, the blooming this plant blooms usually between uh, the winter and the spring uh, the leaves are very uh, very beautiful i think you can see they are quite long and ribbon like i really like them and uh, the um, flowers are absolutely uh, gorgeous as you can see uh, they are uh, completely white except for a tiny little bit of yellow here in uh, the column that is the reproductive uh, um, structure of the orchids where the pollinia and the stigma are present and uh, uh, the um, you can see there's not uh, really uh, much difference between the two upper petals and the sepals indeed they look uh, pretty much uh, uh, identical the uh, the petals in the orchids are uh, the labellum and the two uh, and the two lateral uh, basically structures of the flower instead the, the structure at the very uh, top and the two at the bottom uh, the two lateral at the bottom are the sepals however quite common in orchids uh, sepals and the two upper petals resemble each other uh, instead is the lip really to uh, be different from the rest of the flower and uh, i really like also this uh, crest this airy crest uh, gets uh, quite a unique texture it's actually quite funny to to touch it is uh, is a really cool uh, addition to this uh, incredible flower and I, of course i love the pure white of this uh, orchid is i think the whitest orchid in my collection i don't think i have another orchid that is so pure white and uh, i absolutely love it one thing that i um, uh, that got me a little bit uh, um, kind of surprised instead is the fragrance i knew that uh, um, selogine cristata has uh, is a species that has uh, both uh, clones uh, some clones are fragrant and some others are not most of the times i found that uh, the alba variety is not fragrant at all however after a few days it started blooming uh, i found that uh, the um, actually uh, keeping my nose in the flower was incredibly even if it was not uh, uh, very scented uh, the scent was absolutely beautiful it was very fresh and kind of fruity a little bit like pineapple and i absolutely loved it and i thought uh, probably in the next few days would have been stronger thanks to um, the flower aging so the fragrance becoming more powerful and actually the fragrance it became more powerful but unfortunately in addition to this uh, beautiful uh, fruity scent uh, it added a very strong note of a kind of uh, acrid uh, scent acrid fragrance 
that really reminds me of cat urine and uh, of course it's not really the best fragrance you can think about and uh, it is uh, um, not that overpowering really if you don't put uh, your nose close to the flower you will not be able at least in the alba variety you will not be able to to smell it anyway but uh, if you keep your nose uh, close to the flower, you can actually feel this uh, weird mix of uh, cat urine and uh, fruity scent uh, put together. So really, it's not an orchid I can recommend uh, for scent, but uh, of course you can see how amazing the blooming are. The, blooming, the blooms are and uh, they're also quite big as well I think they're about maybe six or seven centimeters in diameter and uh, I also love the arrangement of the flower spike you can see it's a very nice cascade of flowers and well you can imagine in specimen plants with a lot of pseudobulbs how beautiful the overall effect is but I think it's absolutely gorgeous even the effect of this plant here I'm just uh, uh, keeping it a little bit, uh, yeah, I'm getting the mobile a little bit further from the plant so you can appreciate the presentation of the plant uh, in full uh, size. Uh, about the lights, lighting, uh, this plant likes uh, um, quite uh, high light but not uh, direct light and uh, temperature, uh, as again, as I said, moderate. In winter can easily go, can easily get 10 to 12 degrees and actually it's better because uh, thanks to this uh, uh, temperature drop in winter the plant is able to produce a flower spike then between winter and spring and after blooming the plant will start uh, uh, the active growth and I will definitely repot it in a um, better medium that keeps the moisture a lot uh, better. Uh, I'm not too sure if this plant will bloom next year because I found that when the plant uh, gets uh, divided or sometimes repotted it's not uh, very very keen to bloom. Possibly anyway there is uh, this other, this another flower spike so hopefully it will bloom soon if this flower spike doesn't abort. And uh, the um, uh, nice peculiarity of uh, the flower is that at first I thought that the flowers were aborting but actually this uh, dry sheet is just a sheet uh, at first I thought it was the flower actually dying uh, dying down but instead it was just the sheet and the beautiful blooms uh, ended up coming up very early very quickly uh, I'm really absolutely amazed by this orchid that I can definitely recommend to everybody who wants to add a pure white uh, um, orchid to their uh, collection. Um, indeed in some countries the orchid is uh, called uh, angel orchid because of the beautiful appearance of uh, the blooms and actually uh, some parts of the Himalaya were known as the land of the white orchids because of the uh, number of specimen of Selogine cristata uh, blooming uh, all uh, blo blooming all, all together. Uh, as usual, I hope that you enjoyed the video and uh, um, I think to have explained pretty much all I knew. Again, I have been keeping this orchid just for about three months, so I'm not experienced in this orchid, but hopefully <laughs> next year I will, I will be able to tell you even more about its uh, cultivation and uh, I will definitely report it in a mix of Bark and Sphagnum because I think it's the best uh, um, suitable medium potty mix for this orchid and it's quite a lot of moisture, especially in summer. Uh, as usual, thank you very much for watching. If you would like uh, any other um, information, please uh, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, uh, it would be great if you liked the video to give a thumbs up. And if you uh, uh, didn't subscribe yet, obviously, it would be, uh, I would be very pleased if you decide to subscribe to my channel if you like uh, this video and the other videos on this uh, YouTube channel. As usual, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.